and welcome to week seven of A Year of Wisdom. Day 49. Job 23 and 24. Then Job answered, Today also my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. If I only knew how to find him so that I could go to his throne, I would plead my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would learn how he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. Would he prosecute me forcefully? No, he will certainly pay attention to me. Then an upright man could reason with him, and I would escape from my judge forever. If I go east, he's not there. If I go west, I cannot perceive him. When he's at work to the north, I cannot see him. When he turns south, I cannot find him. Yet he knows the way I have taken. When he has tested me, I will emerge as pure gold. My feet have followed in his tracks. I have kept his way and not turned aside. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily food. But he is unchangeable. Who can oppose him? He does what he desires. He will certainly accomplish what he has decreed for me, and he has many more things like these in mind. Therefore, I'm terrified in his presence. When I consider this, I'm afraid of him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. Yet, I am not destroyed by the darkness, by the thick darkness that covers my face. Why does the Almighty not reserve times for judgment? Why do those who know him never see his days? The wicked displace boundary markers. They steal a flock and provide pasture for it. They drive away the donkeys owned by the fatherless and take the widow's ox as collateral. They push the needy off the road. The poor of the land are forced into hiding. Like wild donkeys in the desert, the poor go out to their task of foraging for food. The wilderness provides nourishment for their children. They gather their fodder in the field and glean the vineyards of the wicked. Without clothing, they spend the night naked, having no covering against the cold. Drenched by mountain rains, they huddle against the rocks, shelterless. The fatherless infant is snatched from the breast. The nursing child of the poor is seized as collateral. Without clothing, they wander about naked. They carry sheaves but go hungry. They crush olives in their presses. They tread the wine presses but go thirsty. From the city, men groan. The mortally wounded cry for help, yet God pays no attention to this crime. The wicked are those who rebel against the light. They do not recognize its ways or stay on its paths. The murderer rises at dawn to kill the poor and needy, and by night he becomes a thief. The adulterer's eye watches for twilight, thinking, no eye will see me. He covers his face. In the dark, they break into houses. By day, they lock themselves in, never experiencing the light. For the morning is like darkness to them. Surely they are familiar with the terrors of darkness. They float on the surface of the water. Their section of the land is cursed, so that they never go to their vineyards. As dry ground and heat snatch away the melted snow, so Sheol steals those who have sinned. The womb forgets them. Worms feed on them. They are remembered no more. So injustice is broken like a tree. They prey on the childless woman who is unable to conceive and do not deal kindly with the widow. Yet God drags away the mighty by his power. When he rises up, they have no assurance of life. He gives them a sense of security, so they rely on it. But his eyes watch over their ways. They are exalted for a moment, then they're gone. They're brought low and shrivel up like everything else. They wither like heads of grain. If this is not true, then who can prove me a liar and show that my speech is worthless? Proverbs 18 
One who isolates himself pursues selfish desires. He rebels against all sound judgment. A fool does not delight in understanding, but only wants to show off his opinions. When a wicked man comes, contempt also does, and along with dishonor, disgrace. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters, a flowing river, a fountain of wisdom. It is not good to show partiality to the guilty by perverting the justice due to the innocent. A fool's lips lead to strife and his mouth provokes a beating. A fool's mouth is his devastation and his lips are a trap for his life. A gossip's words are like choice food that goes down to one's innermost being. The one who is truly lazy in his work is brother to a vandal. The name of Yahweh is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are protected. A rich man's wealth is his fortified city. In his imagination, it is like a high wall. Before his downfall, a man's heart is proud, but humility comes before honor. The one who gives an answer before he listens. This is foolishness and disgrace for him. A man's spirit can endure sickness, but who can survive a broken spirit? The mind of the discerning acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks it. A gift opens doors for a man and brings him before the great. The first to state his case seems right until another comes and cross-examines him. Casting the lot ends quarrels and separates powerful opponents. An offended brother is harder to reach than a fortified city, and quarrels are like the bars of a fortress. From the fruit of his mouth, a man's stomach is satisfied. He's filled with the product of his lips. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. A man who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. The poor man pleads, but the rich one answers roughly. A man with many friends may be harmed, but there is a friend who stays closer than a brother. And once again, thank you for being here today. Click the subscribe right before. here. And we will see you tomorrow for another reading. You carry me Blessings. out of the storm. I'm standing at the crossroads. I'm lost without a clue. Need a big pink neon sign to show me what to do. I thank you, Lord. It glorifies you when you're the only answer. I praise you, Lord, for holding what's too much for me. And I'm amazed by you, Lord, because nothing's too big and nothing's too small to lay at your feet. I want to thank you, Lord, for believing in me.